Trisha, thank you. And I'm supposed to follow that here a little bit? Oh, my goodness. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, is everybody staying cool enough so far? Got a little bit of shade when you need it? You shade tree people okay over here? All right, don't forget, you can still wave your flags and your signs, okay? All right, I want to bring to the stage this time a young lady who is a part of the Tulsa Tea Party Committee. She has worked with me diligently in lining up speakers and getting the program in order. Uh, Nancy Parsons is married with four grown children. She has been a long-term soccer mom with her youngest son still playing collegiate soccer. She is a small business owner and president of CDR Assessment Group Incorporated. It is a Tulsa-based firm which she and her business partner started in 1998. CDR develops and provides psychological and performance assessments which made me nervous, by the way, sitting in meetings with her. I just knew she was evaluating me the whole time I was talking. But I got through it. Uh, performance assessments and services for global clients. Nancy is a member of the Board of Directors for the Oklahoma State Chamber of Commerce, a member of WIP, that's Women in Public Policy, and CDR is certified as a WBENC, nationally certified woman-owned business. Ladies and gentlemen, talking about we must act now to stop nationalized medicine. Please welcome Miss Nancy Parsons. Thank you. Okay, this subject may get you a little, you're a little warm now, it may get you a little warmer, okay? Uh, most of us are alarmed, angered, is that too loud? And feel helpless to stop the tide of out of control spending, which is exponentially and dangerously accelerated under President Obama and this Democratic Congress. The time has come to put an end to this reckless and destructive behavior. We are not helpless and we must act now. I will lay out a call to action on the most critical piece of legislation that the Obama administration and Congress are trying to rush through to passage before this July session ends. 
This is nationalized, also known as socialized medicine. The speed and daunting price tags of spending that the Obama team has pushed through is both perilous and unprecedented in our nation's history. Remember the stimulus plan? It went through so fast, in fact, that no one had a chance to read the $800 billion disaster. The earmark loaded $3.5 trillion omnibus bill was raced through with tactics that prevented debate or filibuster. We must act now because they are using the same tactics of speed and stealth with the Health Care Reform Act of 2009, now la launched as public option. As the Wall Street Journal pointed out on June 3rd, if sharks stop swimming, they sink and drown. President Obama seems to view his health care program in the same way. In fact, he has said, if we don't get it done this year, we aren't going to get it done. Since the mainstream media fails to report objectively, you must know that the Democrats intend to control another whopping 18% of the U.S. economy, which is health care, at an estimated cost of $1.5 trillion. Meanwhile, they assert that 30% of our health care spending today is wasteful, so they want to ration our health care. To succeed, they know they must pass this legislation fast before the people have a chance to understand the true nature, scope, and impact of this radical health care scheme. Whirlwind speed is needed because they know the American people will reject this madness if the terms hit the light of day with objective scrutiny. In fact, in the Wall Street Journal opinion section on June 11th, Carl Rove explained, quote, the public option is, is just phony. It is a bait and switch tactic to it is a bait and switch tactic to reassure the people that the president's goals are less radical than they really are. Mr. Obama's real aim, as some Democrats admit, is a single payer government run health care system. End quote. I don't know about you, but it appears to me that the government has already taken over far too many sectors of our economy. We must act now. There is no dispute that we have a health care problem in this nation with an estimated 40 million lacking health care benefits, albeit some of these are temporary. However, as a small business owner, I can assure you that the vast majority of the uninsured work for small businesses who cannot afford adequate health care policies for their employees. Unless you've run a small business yourself, it is unlikely that you are aware that we are actually taxed at higher income rates, federal and, sta and state than large corporations or top salary earners. We are taxed at the highest personal rates, plus our, business, our businesses operating expense funds. So at year end, if you have two or three months worth of cash in your checking account to pay your bills, such as payroll, these funds are considered taxable income in addition to any salary you were paid during that year. Fixing this unfair tax burden could be the primary key to solving the vast majority of the health care gap today. Why not credit directly and reduce the taxes of small businesses for those who are providing health care? Why not allow us to pool our insurance plans together, together for better overall benefit levels, currently prohibited by federal laws? We can solve this problem in the private sector if the federal government would get out of the way. Yeah. We must act now. However, on the contrary, since President Obama and this Democratic Congress seem to have an unquenchable thirst for complete control, their solution is to nationalize medicine. If they successfully seize health care, they will dictate what premiums we are to pay, what benefits are to be covered, and then they want to administer the whole thing as another federal bureaucracy. The small business the Small Business Health Options Program Act of 2009, called SHOP, currently being pushed through the Senate, mandates employer participation. In SHOP, the Secretary of Health and Human Services is to choose an administrator, or czar, with the authority to set contract terms, determine eligibility, and to set nationwide required benefit levels and more. I don't have time to go into the gory details today, but suffice it to say, no matter how the media and the power-hungry politicians try to spin, gloss over, and hide the details, they will destroy the greatest healthcare system in the world if we allow this to happen. 
If you are still not convinced about the dangers of this healthcare takeover, think about the federal government's performance in running.